I wanted to ask you as well, Greg, about the scenes that we saw at Wembley before the game even started from, from quite early on in Wembley Way and surrounding areas. Fans trying to get into the stadium with no tickets and, and filling up seats and then lots of um, fighting afterwards as well, bottles and, and chaos everywhere. What did you make of it all? Well, I went. I went on the train. Uh, I walked down Wembley Way. Um, I didn't see a lot. I didn't see violence. I saw a lot of alcohol. There were a lot of cans and bottles lying around. Um, but I, I sometimes think these things get exaggerated. I don't know. I then my ticket was on the other side, so I then wandered around the other side, and I saw at least fifty guys, and they were all men who'd uh, discovered that if you could climb onto the top of the toilet, you could then leap into the stadium. And that's all they were doing until the police turned up to stop them. Mm. But I saw a lot doing that. Um, I, I, I don't know how bad it was. I mean, there was a lot of alcohol. There had been a lot of alcohol consumed. And there were quite a lot of people there who clearly didn't have tickets. It was bad. Yeah, Greg, I, I, Greg, I was there. I, I don't think it's been exaggerated at all. And, and honestly, Greg, after, I mean, you, if you come out after the game, you would have seen what it was like around Wembley. That was pretty obvious. There was glass everywhere, you know, from yeah, broken bottles. And... But it was not, I didn't, as I walked back from Wembley to the station, you know, in amongst the crowds, and you had to sit and wait for, for the next train to come in, and it was, I thought it was very well organised. I didn't see a lot of violence there. There had been a lot of bottles and cans but I think someone cleared quite a lot of them up during the game I don't know I, I think I think saying it's well organised I think probably wrong Greg because there were hundreds of people that got into the stadium without a ticket that's no, what, surely what that's was well, I mean, what was well organised was, was the way they got people back onto the train I thought it was chaos. I tried. I tried to get out of Wembley, and and the roads were closed. You couldn't move. It was it was quite literally because of because of fighting and police presence. I thought it. I thought it was awful. And if, fair enough, if you didn't experience that on the way to the train station, I'm glad you didn't see anything because there were some horrible scenes. But in terms of fans getting into the stadium without any tickets and and the lack of police presence and the security being completely overwhelmed, who has to answer questions for that in your opinion? Well, clearly there will have, there'll be an inquiry, as I understand it, and clearly the FA, who own Wembley, uh, will have to take the responsibility. And now, what about to 2030 with a bid? Because obviously that's very important. Do you think that should be just, you know, carry on and it's fine that England should host a yeah. tomorrow with that behaviour that happened? Yes, I think this was a... I hope this was an exception. Uh, if, uh, But I think I don't think that will affect our been for 2030 2030 i mean it's you know it's not unknown to have uh i mean i've been to a number of tournaments over the years where i've seen quite a lot of violence okay great okay, well thank you for your time this morning we'll speak to you again very soon greg dyke there the former fa chairman and if you did see things like, like i did like cast did i mean you can see them now on social media the videos put you right um i don't think it was well organized at all that that's greg's opinion i, I don't know i think well I it's think his it was, experience laura but yeah and you can't there's make nothing someone experience that something. to me is unimaginable that you could you can see enough on social media to realize and the carnage afterwards that there was a lot going on at wembley and before in central london Talk Sport Breakfast with Laura Woods, Monday to Wednesday morning, 6 till 10, on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.